So in this video, we will be going to understand how this architecture diagram is working along with this step-by-step -step guide. So as you can see at the top of the image, we have Terraform. So with the help of Terraform, we are creating Jenkins servers on AWS. Then after that, we will be going to create EKS cluster using AWS CLI and EKS Cutter utility. Once the EKS cluster creation has been completed, we will be going to install AWS Load Balancer Controller on our EKS cluster for ingress controller with the help of Helm. When the infrastructure has been configured, we will move forward to create our pipelines for 3 tier application deployment, where we have front-end, back-end, and database. So for front-end and back-end, we set up the pipelines there we have multiple stages in our jenkins so the first thing is code quality analysis to check the quality of the code for that we are using sonar cube then for dependency check we are using tool called dependency check with the help of that we are checking the dependencies of the applications then after that we are using trivi to do the file scanning once the file scanning has been completed so we will be going to build the docker image and for building the docker image docker file is required so for that we have written the docker files for front end and back end both once the building image stage has been completed we will be going to push our docker images to the ecr repository and the repository would be private. Once the Docker image has been pushed to the ECR, we will be going to scan our image through Trivi. If the scan is completed with no CVs, Jenkins will update the deployment file for the front end and back end, where it will update the image tag in the Kubernetes manifest file. On our EKS cluster, we will also configure Argo CD, same using Helm. So as soon as the image tag has been updated in the manifest file of the GitHub repo, Argo CD will get a trigger from GitHub and then it will deploy the new changes to the Kubernetes cluster. It can be front-end changes, back-end changes, or database changes. Let's understand Kubernetes manifests that we are using one by one. So for the front-end, we have deployments and services. Then the same thing we have for back-end as well. And with the help of the services, we are communicating to other microservices. And the services of database front-end and back-end is cluster type. Now let's move forward to database related Kubernetes manifest file. So first of all, we are using stateful sets instead of deployments. Then we also have created persistent volume to persist the data permanently. The PVC is also created, which is claiming the persistent volume from PV itself. And then it is injected to our stateful set spot. We are also using secrets for database. Then we have ECR secrets as our ECR repositories are private. In the end, we have ingress to deploy our applications to the internet so that anyone can access our application from the internet. Once the ingress controller has been created, it will create one application load balancer and that application load balancer will have DNS. And then we will add that DNS in our domain provider. It can be GoDaddy or Route 53, whatever you want to use. There we will create one record and in that record, we will add DNS name with the domain or subdomain, whatever you want to have it. Now let's move forward to the monitoring part. So in the monitoring part, we are using Cube Prometheus Grafana stack to monitor our Jenkins server and EKS cluster along with the application's performance. I hope you have understood the end-to-end -end workflow of this architecture diagram. If you want to do the same project, you can just get the step-by-step -step guide through my Medium blog. The link is in the description below. Feel free to let me know your thoughts. Thank you. Have a good day.